Welcome to Sustainable Packaging with Corey Connors. Today's guest is Mr. Jordan Hurley, is the founder of Soap 2.0. How are you, Jordan? Yeah, good. Thank you. Very good. Excited to be to be with you on your podcast. Thank you so much for taking time. I'm excited about your product and I'm very interested to hear a little bit about your background and then if you could walk us through how, how this unique uh, product works, that'd be great. Yeah, I will just in brief, I mean, I've always been a bit of a, a serial entrepreneur in various different industries and this this product was born pretty much out of the, in the middle of the pandemic. Um, I had a dispenser in my in my property and I didn't have any foaming soap. So I pretty much uh, filled the dispenser up with uh, some uh, water and and screwed in some washing up liquid. And uh, just to just to test whether the dispenser was worked. Right. And, and then it made me realize that we, you know, we've been putting all sorts of household products uh, and very different products in the commercial world into you know, party vinyl, alcohol, film, PVA, the likes of washing machine tablets and dishwasher tablets, etc. Probably the two most common. And why are we not doing it for hand? And you know, we, I guess, as a business, we, you know, we we looked at it and as an idea, and I approached some some people that know a lot more about chemicals than me. As my knowledge on that, that is not my speciality. But who who how could help me create this product? So you know, when you look at the industry in general. We've been, you know, really there's there's cartridge systems, there's pouch systems, and there's bulk refill, which obviously we're, we're transporting everything around in uh, in, in plastic bottles, plastic par- car- cartridges and, and plastic um, pouches. And for me, it just seemed like a perfect solution. Let's put a concentrate inside a, you know, a uh, dissolvable sachet, which, you know, doesn't even add to any microplastics in the water system. Brilliant. And make the process simple. So I... I was sent a sample by your team and it showed up and the packaging is one of my favorites. It's flexi hex material, which I love. It was beat to heck. The box was just damaged beyond uh, repair. It even said repacked by DHL, but the product showed up perfect condition. So that's the deal with sustainable packaging. You can make it, ship it all the way. You're in the UK, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all the way from over overseas, uh, over in the UK, and uh, this is a glass bottle, and it arrived in perfect condition. Well done. Excellent. Well, I, I guess I, I can't take uh, credit for the packaging, but I can definitely take credit for what's involved. And uh, I know uh, <laughs> FlexiHex are, you know, one of your uh, previous tests. So, and uh, you know, we, we work very closely with them on on what we can provide in the in the way of ensuring our products arrive safely, but also sustainably. And it's a it's a beautiful glass bottle with a matte finish. Uh, I love this this stripe on the side that you can see how much is left in the bottle and a dispenser pump that's very elegant. So I have the white one here for you. Hey, well. there you go. So your consumer will buy this once, and then you will tablet for future refills, and they'll provide the the water. Is that that's the key, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think reducing the transportation of water is so important for us when weight contri- when weight of product contributes so heavily into the carbon footprint of products, as well as the cost. You know, I, I don't really ever try and sell our products on a, uh, you know, on, on cost. It's It's got to be on its uh, the education of the actual what's involved in the process. And it's so simple, just reducing, just taking the plastic out. And taking the uh, the water out of a product just it can <laughs> could probably save the planet alone if we if every product <laughs> moved over to those kind of highly you know concentrate products. It seems like such a simple concept, and it's it's taken off gangbusters. Absolutely, just fantastic to see the interest in what you guys are doing. I know you've uh, had some incredible growth uh, recently. Do you want to speak to that kind of how, how this has just taken off and you guys are doing so well? Yeah, I, I think, well, you know, just briefly on the product, I, I've got a box here and this is fully recyclable as well. But when you look at, when we approach people in the industry and you have something, which is you've got a, 12 liters of soap, for example, which is, you know, 12,000 mil of soap. What you would put that is in a cartridge system, you'd be looking at at least a box, at least this size, yep. this height on a cartridge system. 
And then you've got, if you looked at uh, a bulk refill, you'd be looking at, you know, what, three to four gallons worth where we fit all of that into this. Amazing. So what he's so, holding up for the listeners is a corrugated, a small roll in tuck top corrugated box. That's about the size of an iPhone is, is less smaller, better, smaller right? than your hand. And it's got uh, a dozen refills. Yeah. Incredible. Well done. So, yeah, so that that's, that's a big selling point for us. But then at the moment, I think the industry in general and you know, when you look at the end users, you look at the retail outlets, you look at, you know, you look at schools, you look at airports or wherever it may be. They're all, especially in the, in, you know, when, when you look at hospitality as well, but everyone at the moment after the pandemic, we've had a horrendous time regarding sustainability with PPE, but also all of these companies have incurred costs that they would never have planned for. Right. Everyone, if you look at, you know, you type in, you type in Marriott, sustainability you type in disney sustainability they or single use plastic they all pledged bef- you know the year before the pandemic come yeah. to eliminate single use plastics out of their businesses right from you know from their facility management side of their business right through to you know anything that they're bringing through those doors uh, on a purchasing side of things but none of them could do it because the pandemic struck and i think now it's really we've had to speed up the process of companies moving over to a sustainable solution in all areas of their business. And I think that's what's been our success. We've, we've launched a product which answers a lot of questions for people in the way of how do we do this? How, how do we reduce the plastic? How do we reduce the, um, the carbon footprint of our business for hand soap? You know, it's, it's, it's a big business, you know, I don't think we think about it too much, but if you, you know, stop for a second and try and think of how many from public toilets right through to office blocks to all those locations that you can think that there's a toilet that's normally provided by hand soap. And really for us, what we do is we don't just offer a completely sustainable solution. We offer reduced transport costs. We offer reduced invoicing because you only need, you can, this is, you know, this has got a shelf life of two years and then a year once it's been diluted. So we've just delivered, uh, one of my distributors has just delivered to a school today and they've took a 12 months up front. Now, all of their, all of their soap literally was in the box of, you know, a size, you know, a size 10 sneaker box, you know, (laughs) so they've got 12 months worth of soap up front. So they've only, they've only paid one delivery cost. It fits in a small storage cupboard they can implement it easily and they've just reduced everything so quickly yeah um, instead of having a normal delivery of every couple of weeks right in a large case when you mentioned the cartridge system you're referring to what we often see as the plastic bottle with the nozzle on the bottom that's already mixed it with the water and the soap in it And then that goes into the plastic dispenser that's on the wall at the municipality, the school, the office building. And then you take the old empty plastic bottle and you throw it usually in the garbage. So what what you're doing is you're eliminating all of that plastic, all of that transport, all of that storage, like you mentioned, for all of these companies, businesses, schools, governments, regular folks like me and you <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> at home yeah. use, you know, it's exciting. Well done. The thing is, is that when you look at those systems that are there in place is that they are you know, purchased on convenience and, you know, various other sort of, you know, I'm sure if I was sat here with a cartridge manufacturer, there would be <laughs> arguments, but from our side, you know, look, we're, we're not, we're not, um, we're not trying to create a, a monopoly in the industry. We welcome competition going forward and we welcome, you know, it's uh, we have an IP on our product, but you can't patent a, you know, solution inside a polyvinyl alcohol sleeve. So, but what we are trying to do is have the biggest impact. And for us, we focus on the commercial industry. And by that way, we can get the product out there quicker, faster, because we have decision makers that make decisions for large amounts. You make a decision at home, for, you know, probably the best part of maybe if I say, you know, you've got one of these boxes, that's going to last <laughs> you probably 12 months. Right. Um, and that's great. And we do need to make individual, you know, if we can get that everyone doing it and changing over, 
but for one person, if you were buying for a huge company, you know, we, we've taken on a, a retail company recently and they are, you know, they've got globally four and a half thousand retail sites. Wow. So one person, two or three people can make such a difference by making a decision to change over to a sustainable solution. It'd be interesting to hear how many or how many pounds or how much plastic that would remove from the world. If you think about 4,500 locations, how many thousands of, of plastic bottles will not need to be manufactured, will not need to be recycled, will not need to be shipped. Incredible. How many, how many well, gallons of water or liters it, it, of water? Yeah. You know, if, if, if you think about it, you know, there's a, if you said four and a half thousand sites for a big retailer, and they're not the only big retailer in the world, but, right. and you turn around and they, and they say they have, uh, I mean, this one at the moment has, a, they're for customer toilets and, and for staff toilets. So right. they've got, they've got an average of eight of those bottles being installed. Yeah. And then if you turn around and uh, look at it and you, you did that times that by eight, and then that's 36,000 of those bottles going out there on the walls. Yeah. And then you turn around and let's just say they have, they go through, let's be really modest and say they only have, uh, they, they, you know, they only get refilled five times a year, six times a year. Yeah. You times that, you then times that by six, you've then got pretty much 216,000 refills. So that alone, just a year for that would be, would normally for them would be 216,000 plastic bottles. Incredible. Is, or would be being used or plastic about cartridge. the size of this so yeah. how many truckloads of plastic have you eliminated from just being necessary you know well it, you know ju just to date you know we we have just to date we we started trading in september and to date now we have already eliminated around about 300 to wow. 350,000 liters you know worth of product Incredible. Would, and, and it, the key thing is now big companies aren't just looking at just to just to make a, a point of it we also have we are a huge with it being a sachet we're not providing the water we're not providing a plastic bottle we also enable a huge cost saving as well yeah in some cases on the power you know so you know, some people could be buying in, in, in dollars, in dollars from us, they could be purchasing a, a thousand mil worth of the end user. This is, they could be purchasing a thousand mil of soap for $2 when a pouch system could cost them up to $10. Yeah. So we're not just offering them a sustainability saving. We're offering them a cost saver in it as well, which so many, everyone's looking for, which yeah. everyone, sadly in this industry, you know, sadly in every uh, industry. Yeah, at least sustainability <laughs> still yeah. still isn't the the only focus. They still has to be, you know, they still have to look at the bottom line. So many times, all the all week long on LinkedIn and TikTok on all all these channels that I'm talking to people like you and I. So many times, people are saying, "Oh, well, sustainable packaging is more expensive, or sustainable items are more expensive." Sometimes. But oftentimes it's like this, where it's a massive savings. And it, it's, just, it's just an obvious decision to make. Like, come on, it's time, it's me, time to me, stop doing it the old way. Let's, let's yeah. move on and make a, a positive change. I think, I think, Corey, for me is that, and I'm sure, especially with your, with your background, you'd agree, but if everyone just took the hit on some of the packaging on the extra 10, 20%, you know, on, on their boxes or whatever it may be, if we all moved over to it, just like any other industry, volume, in, you know, brings price down. Sure. If everyone's moving into sustainability, then we can all start manufacturing at a higher level yep. to make more sustainable packaging, which would then ultimately bring the price down back to where, you know, we, we, if we all just changed over in the next three years, we'd be back to where we're buying now for something that isn't, you know, it isn't a sustainable solution, which they're purchasing purely on price. Right. hundred percent. It's, it's so exciting. I feel like we, I started this show about 10 months ago and it was just as things were just really starting to take off and people started to talk about sustainability more and more, at least as far as I can tell. But I know it's been a topic for many years, 
but it seems like people are really engaging with it. They're embracing it. They're deciding it can be done. And how, how do we do it? And this is a great, this is something everybody can do, assuming you have water available. Well, <laughs> right. well, just to put it in perspective, and I know I've mentioned them before, we're launching a, a body wash, a shampoo, and a conditioner, and uh, potentially, uh, well, hopefully very soon, also a, a body lotion, a hand and oh, body wow. lotion. So, and all in the same format. It will all great. arrive in exactly the same way. Marriott alone have i think they go through if you look it up it goes through 500 million small little plastic bottles a year Jeez. 500 million a year <laughs> and they only have seven thousand of the hotels in the world only seven thousand so, there's a lot you know they you know when you look at it yeah they're not the only group and when you think if that's what they go through if you added everyone together and sadly i've not had time to do that research yet but <laughs> You know, you're talking billions of plastic bottles that are when realistically we all, you know, as much as I want the business, Corey, I want the business without a doubt. But in my eyes, you know, if they don't move over to this or a solution like this, a concentrate solution for the shower gels and everything else. What happens, you know, in my eyes, you know, where does it stop? And we all, I mean, in a way, we all expect free amenities when we go to these locations. Sure. Um, but we all do own our own shampoo, conditioner. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we feel the hotel have, have made us feel like it's our right. And if we don't use it, who doesn't have a cupboard at home who travels a lot for, with about, you know, 200 of these bottles that you know 20 different manufacturers all the different types <laughs> of skins and different types but we all don't mind using them right and uh, you know it's it's a shame really because it should be eliminated from it it's you know it's yeah. that they are just as bad if not worse than plastic straws and stirrers in in, in the food and beverage industry oh that's a great comparison very very similar i did want to talk to you about the uk plastic tax this yeah. is something that I'm just learning about, and it seems like your solution is going gonna, is gonna to offer an alternative to companies and people looking to avoid this tax. Is, is, that, is yeah, that helping I, you? I think it is helping me. We don't, we don't push on it too much, mainly down to uh, there is there there is a tax and there's you know a price per tonnage on on what you use. I don't think the tax is high enough in my eyes, but sure you know, that'll change. Yeah. Well, I just think do you know what? It's one of those. It will the the bigger the companies, the bigger the tax, but then they can also swallow the 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 cost. I think you know the smaller the companies are not getting charged enough, so then therefore it's not enough. I mean, I think everyone's conscious of it. I don't think it's going to make anyone, I don't think it's going to make anyone pick up the phone and ring me, you know, personally. Well, um, I hope I think, it does. I think, it, I think yeah. it's part of the, I think it's part of the, and that's just my personal opinion on it. I think it's definitely part of our, our, our selling point. But for me, I hope the education and the impact these companies can have on the planet, which is desperately needed and i'm not just i like to look at all the sustainability solutions i like to champion all of the people that are coming out and the companies and even the big companies that are making changes but i do feel that there's a lot of big companies that always they feel the need to bring out a sustainable product yeah. but then they put it at such a high price and they put it next to their non-sustainable product so they're all they're doing is in my eyes they're just creating a product because they feel they should have to because it, it, it looks good for the brand you know yeah. you take take colgate for an example they bring out a sustainable tube a sustainable packaging etc and then they put it on the shelf and it's double the price of the the one that isn't and so who's buying it but what they can do is do a great marketing piece about we have a sustainable toothpaste option for you right so we're, you, look at it, us we're trying yeah it's yeah it, it's kind of like in my eyes it's kind of sort of like mcdonald's bringing out a vegan burger they're not stopping, <laughs> you know they're not they're not stopping making the beef ones <laughs> but we'll give you an option just so you don't think we're too bad choices right <laughs> absolutely yeah where where you know for us 
our whole focus on all of our product range going forward. As we grow as a business globally, we are starting to move over to, you know, in, into North America and, and Canada as well. Our focus is to, to educate along the journey. That's the key thing about this. In any kind of sustainable solution, whether it's packaging, soap, you know, whatever it may be, it, people need educating on why. Oh, I love it. I hope I hope my company Landsberg Aurora adopts your products. I'd, I'd sure love to be one of your large distributors here over in the USA. So yeah, no, continue that conversation. what's next? What you guys got uh, some new products coming out, you got the body lotion, you got some other things. Do those come in the same? Do those use the same dispenser bottle? Or is it a, a different? Yeah. I mean, for us, we, we, we give people options for dispensing. But for me, we don't, we, we're a, regarding our normal dispensers that we have on the wall, we, we, we've partnered with Brightwell, which is a UK manufacturer, but also they manufacture in the States as well. Uh, and they've just launched a, a recyclable plastic dispenser. So that's oh, one that's of great. the reasons why we've launched with them. But the other thing is, is that our, all of our distributors just go direct to them. So we're not a dispensing company. You know, the bottles that we provide are a solution that we can offer if you don't currently have your own. If you've right. already got a dispenser on the wall and it's a bulk refill dispenser, you don't need ours. We, we don't want you to... You know, we only want you to replace the ones that are on the wall if they don't work with our product. And even if you did replace that product and people are, you know, we've had questions where people go, you know, what do we do with our old dispenser? We've got to send it to landfill or we've got right. to send it, you know, how, how do you battle that? And I go, well, the issue being is, is that you've got a plastic cartridge or a pouch going in that that's going to landfill every month. So that one dispenser yeah. is creating, you know, 12 landfills. You know, once you've changed it once over two hours, there's no more landfill. Our right. product, our carbon footprint for this product ends with the user. You know, it, it literally ends inside the dispenser. It doesn't need to go anywhere. Nothing needs to be thrown away. Nothing needs to be recycled or to be sent away. And I think that's where a lot of people get very sort of missold. Yeah. There, there is green ingredients into soaps now. There is eco-friendly hand soaps inside a plastic bottle inside a plastic <laughs> cartridge you know people forget about the the packaging or how it arrives and that's yeah. that's that's the issue and just because something's compostable or recyclable you still need someone to actually implement that you still need a human right. being to actually put that in the recycle bin yeah that's the biggest myth of of sustainability is oh well it says recyclable on it so it's it's fine mm -hmm. Right. It's like, you know, you buy you buy a, a cereal box. Unless you take the plastic sleeve outside of it, <laughs> it's no it's not a recyclable packaging until you take that out. <laughs> it's land it's landfill until you separate it into recyclable components and until you put it into a place where it will actually get recycled. I, I'm a huge advocate for recycling and really push as much as possible towards recyclable packaging because I think it it works. It makes sense. You know, let's reuse those fibers over and over again or reuse those molecules. And I think you've just used the key word there. I The word recycling, for me, gets lost. In my eyes, this box is reusable. Right. In what format it's reusable? Yes, it needs to be recycled to be reused. But the problem is, like you've just said, in my eyes, there should be a reusable bin, you know, yep. um, because recyclable, everyone just goes, oh, it's got a bit of paper on it, or I can feel something that sounds that feels like it's going to, you know, be reusable. But if you don't do it properly, and it's like with our jars and stuff like that with, with glass, you need to clean it out before you recycle it. And, yep. you know, if not, it's, you know, it, it's harder to deal with. And there's so many things that frustrate me with that kind of thing that we that we do at home, if you know what I mean, that we have, we have our own personal responsibilities for that you know it's a laziness isn't it let's be fair it's, <laughs> it's a lot easier just to throw it in the trash bin isn't it yeah absolutely uh, yeah. 100 and that sadly we live in a world of convenience yeah we all pay for that's convenience <laughs> well and that's why it's up to us in the in our world to provide products to consumers and to businesses that are easy to recycle, easy easy to make more sustainable. So what you're doing is great. I applaud you guys. Well done. Thanks, Corey. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking some time for us today, Jordan. I really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank Landsberg Aurora for sponsoring this podcast. 
And uh, if you're listening, please take a minute to rate the show and tell your friends about us. Keep it on the automatic download. We really appreciate that. Jordan, thank you again. Thanks, Corey.